Carlton was the first person I saw when I walked up today, so I guess I knew it was going to be a good day at that point. Um, I, although I didn't help him carry in his books, so I, I figured you would get those yourself. I uh, no, I noticed, I noticed that. <laughs> Carlton Stowers is the author of 40 books, including two winners of the Mystery Writers of America Edgar Award. Texas Writers League Violet Crown Award winner, and he was a finalist for the Texas Institute of Letters Award for the year's best first novel. His journalism has appeared in such publications as the New York Times, Sports Illustrated, People, Time, Good Housekeeping, Boys Life, American Way, and he has received awards from such organizations as the Dallas Press Club, Houston Press Club, State Bar of Texas, Dallas Bar Association, and North North American Travel Journalists Association and the Texas Sports Writers Association. His writing has been anthologized in Reader's Digest, today's best nonfiction and best American sports writer. Stowers is a member of the Texas Literary Hall of Fame and Texas Institute of Letters, the Big Country Athletic Hall of Fame. He was named by the Dallas Press Club as a living legend of North Texas journalism. He has received the A.C. Green Literary Award for Lifetime Achievement. And I can say I first had the uh, chance to meet Carlton at the Penelope football banquet about 2006 or seven, And I've leaned on him for advice as a writer since then, and I very, very much appreciate it. And so, Carlton, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to introduce you to Corey and April McAdams. Corey was the football coach at Penelope High School, and his wife was teaching there during the time that I was researching and writing Where Dreams Die Hard. I was told to keep this short and, and will, and I would much rather talk with you than to you, but I thought that I might do a little dog and pony show on the life of a book, you know, from idea to finding a publisher to what happens after it's published and, and all that. I've been asked about that a number of times. And I really hadn't thought much about it until I got a letter this week, earlier this week, from a friend of mine named Elroy Bodie, who is a wonderful, wonderful essayist, retired school teacher, now lives in El Paso. We have never personally met, but have corresponded on a regular basis for years. Uh, I consider him a very good friend. And I got a letter from him, Monday or Tuesday, in which he said, I pulled down where dreams die hard from the shelf the other day to reread and he had some very nice things to say about it, which as a writer, you always appreciate. And so I wrote him a letter back telling him about being invited to be here and what I had in mind. And basically what I'd like to do is just read you the letter that I wrote to Elroy because it's basically what I had hoped to talk about and a little more condensed and maybe a little understandable. <coughs> How thoughtful of you to send along such kind words about where dreams die hard. The most enjoyable book project I've ever ventured into. Would you hand me that water? It's right there on the corner. <coughs> I'm going to be in trouble without this. <coughs> Your letter arrived as I was giving thought to a brief talk I'm to give this weekend in Waco at the first annual Texas Sports Hall of Fame Book Festival. I'm thinking of explaining the history of the Penelope book from inception to post-publication reaction, sort of a the life of a book. Mind if I bend your ear. It began as an idea for an article for the Dallas Observer 
one hardly embraced by the politics-minded editor. Only after pitching the idea repeatedly did she finally throw up her hands and tell me to go ahead. To her amazement, the piece that was finally published was ultimately selected for inclusion in the best American sports writing anthology, along with pieces from big name writers at Sports Illustrated, Esquire, New York Times, etc., etc. Aware there was much more that I wished to tell on the subject, I began to think about a book. A proposal went out to a dozen publishers with but one positive reply, which was all I needed. Understand that I never entertained any hope that it might become a bestseller. It didn't. Or that it might even get reviewed. I saw it as a quiet little book that would come and go without notice or fanfare. Lo and behold, the first week it was out, an editor at the New York Times called to ask if I would write an op-ed piece on Penelope and six-man football. <coughs> Later, Dallas Morning News book columnist Judy Alter decided to publish a list of her ten all-time best books on Texas. And there was a little where dreams die hard listed along with J. Frank Dobie, Larry McMurtry, McCarthy, and people like that. One evening, the Penelope coach, Corey, called to pass along this anecdote. He was on the practice field and saw a couple of men he didn't recognize standing nearby watching. He went up to them, introduced himself, and asked if he might be of any help. One of the visitors said, no, they just read this little book and decided that uh, they wanted to drive down and see Penelope firsthand and meet him. Where are you folks from? Coach McAdams asked. St. Louis, the man replied. <laughs> Sometime later, a lawyer traveling from Austin to Dallas detoured to Penelope to spend some time visiting the school, asked the coach to autograph his copy of the book, then left a $500 donation for the athletic department. One Sunday morning, my phone rang, and it was the athletic director of the University of Oklahoma. You'll never guess where I am, he said. I'm standing on the 50-yard line at Penelope's football stadium. I was driving back to Norman and decided to take a look at this place that you've written about. In time, the book would be the one book, one city selection in Waco, Georgetown, and Victoria. This sort of thing, Elroy, beats prizes and bestsellerdom all to hell as far as I'm concerned. Remember the nationally televised memorial for the West explosion? I didn't see it, but got a call about it, parenthesis from April, later that day and watched a video. It was then Baylor President Ken Starr who introduced President Obama that day and his brief remarks, in his brief remarks, he spent a couple of minutes referring to where dreams die hard. Using it as an example of small town Texas community spirit and unity. Pretty high cotton for a book few, few had ever even heard of. All of this may seem highly immodest, which it is, but it tells of the life of a book, a wonderful story, and the locale and the people that made it possible. 
You well know that as a writer, we all hope to realize some positive response, reaction to what we've worked at. For me, where dreams die hard has paid off in spades. Thanks for allowing me to think out loud. As a writer, the awareness of positive reaction and the fact that what you have written has for some reason inspired some emotion in people is kind of the ultimate compliment. And this book allowed me to say some things, write some things that none before or since has allowed me to do. And for that reason, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, hell, I still go down to Penelope Games occasionally. I like the atmosphere. I like what I see in the people and the kids. A few years ago, an old high school buddy of mine who's in the insurance business in, in Dallas,